A Kentucky congressman will lead a moment of silence on the House floor in honor of the Kentucky native and her husband killed in the attacks in Brussels. We'll have a preview. A bill that would help children battling a serious condition is now a Kentucky law. We'll show you the face behind Noah's law coming up. And a bill that would make cancer a line of duty death for Kentucky firefighters has been formally filed in Frankfurt. We'll have the details. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpot reporting. While the community continues to mourn the loss of Kentucky native Stephanie Schultz and her husband Justin, a Kentucky congressman is honoring their memory on Capitol Hill. WKYT Washington correspondent Kelly Meyer has the story. It's our top story, 430. Right after the Brussels terror attacks, lawmakers here on Capitol Hill held a moment of silence. At the time, Kentucky Congressman Andy Barr had no idea one of the victims was his constituent. Now Barr is holding another remembrance ceremony. Our thoughts and prayers continue to be with the Moore family and the Schultz family. Tuesday night, as the House of Representatives convenes on the floor, Congressman Barr will join Tennessee Congressman Phil Rowe and Jim Cooper in leading a moment of silence for Justin and Stephanie Schultz, the American couple killed by ISIS terrorists in Brussels just three weeks ago. Justin, a native from Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and Stephanie from Lexington, Kentucky, were living in the Belgian capital since 2014. The couple was dropping off Stephanie's mom at the Brussels airport the moment the explosion went off. We want them to know that America honors them. That America uh, will always remember them. Uh, they are, unfortunately, among the many other American victims of radical Islamic terrorism. They will not be forgotten. Barr tells us that he wants tonight's moment of silence to stand as a reminder to his colleagues that terrorism is a real threat both at home and abroad, and he'll continue to support policies that disrupt the terrorist network. Reporting in Washington, I'm Kelly Meyer. That moment of silence in honor of the Schultz couple is at 7 tonight on the floor of the U.S. House on Capitol Hill. A woman convicted in a robbery at a Danville Domino's where a clerk was shot found out how long she will stay in prison today. A judge sentenced Robin Adams to five years in prison. She pled guilty to her role in the 2014 case. Police say that she drove three people to the Domino's on South 4th Street where they robbed and shot the clerk, Zoe Reed. Reed survived following some surgeries. As part of her plea, Adams will testify now against the three other people charged. Well, the rain has moved out of the bluegrass, and we're left with a really nice spring out day out there with a lot of sunshine. Indeed, and it only is going to get better as we head through the rest of our work week. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Hi, Chris. Hi, guys. That's pretty much all you need to know. It gets better from here over the next several days, and that is certainly... Uh, long overdue for the bluegrass state, really most of the eastern half of the country. We've been struggling so far for the month of April. Right now, it's cooler than normal, but it is gorgeous out there. Look at those wind streamlines coming in from the north and the northeast, and that is a cooler than normal flow around here. Temperatures are roughly 10 degrees cooler than what we should be seeing. Oh, it gets colder to the north. Thankfully, that air is beginning to lift away from Kentucky. We're going to focus on what's going on right now. Bowling Green back toward Paducah and Nashville. That's some of the good stuff we'll get in on tomorrow, but not before we get one more frosty cold night. Frost advisory is out for all of central and eastern Kentucky, and it's a freeze warning into far northeastern Kentucky. If you're out in the open countryside in a valley, your temperature tonight can briefly dip into the upper 20s. Many of us should be into that 30 to 35 degree range. So again, tomorrow morning, guys, a little frost on the pansies across the region. When I come back in a few minutes, though, we're talking full and true springtime temperatures for a change. All right, Chris, we will see you then. Thank you. Today in Frankfurt, Governor Bevin held a ceremonial signing for Noah's Bill, a law designed to help children battling a serious condition. Mike Byer was in the Capitol today, and he talked with Noah, the boy who inspired this bill. Yesterday was my birthday, and today was the best birthday gift. Noah Greenhill turned 10 years old yesterday. Today, he received a gift like no other, leaving big smiles on the faces of he and his family. How excited are you today? Very excited because I was actually getting to hold my very own bill. Noah's bill, also known as Senate Bill 193, was officially signed into law earlier this month. However, Governor Matt Bevin held a ceremonial signing this morning with Noah and his family on hand. You've been an inspiration to many, many people. Uh, and it's a special day. It really is, and I'm honored to be here. 
Noah suffers from a chronic immune system disease called eosinophilic esophagitis. It's a condition that attacks his esophagus, making it hard for him to eat most foods. We started recognizing problems when he was three months old. His dad, Eddie Greenhill, says in order to get nutrition, Noah has to drink a special formula that costs them $40 a day. But with this new bill, insurance companies are now required to pay for the special formula, not just for Noah, but for any child who suffers from the rare genetic condition. We wanted to stand up and, and make a fight for all of them as well as ourselves and so that they don't have to go through the same struggles that we did. I'm very happy for the other people because it's going to help them very well. In Frankfurt, Mike Byer, WKYT. And about 200 children in Kentucky have the condition Noah suffers from. A bill designed to help the families of firefighters has been formally filed. Firefighters joined Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes in the filing of Senate Bill 195. It classifies certain types of cancer deaths as in the line of duty and extends benefits to the families. The bill passed the legislature earlier this year and is already law. Lexington and firefighter Matt Loxton, who was diagnosed with cancer earlier this year, is glad to see it filed. I'm glad that we're looking to this direction. Uh, it's just something that helps protect the guys that are protecting you. That bill covers 12 types of cancers, including some that are considered rare. Police near Seattle are holding a man who is suspected of killing a mother of three he met online. Ingrid Lyne's body was found over the weekend. She was supposed to go out with suspect John Carlton on the night she disappeared. John Blackstone reports. The murder of Ingrid Line, a single mother of three young daughters, has shocked her close knit neighborhood. I almost got sick. I mean, it's, I just talked to her. Justice for Ingrid? No one deserves this. No one. Friends say Line planned to go to a Mariners baseball game Friday night with a date she met online, 37 year old John Charlton. When her ex husband arrived to drop off the kids Saturday morning, she wasn't home. Line was reported missing. Hours later and 10 miles from her house, a homeowner called police after finding body parts, including a foot, in plastic bags left in a recycling bin. We're working closely with the victim's family. Um, all the evidence leads in, in the direction of that particular victim. Detectives connected the two cases, searched Lyons' home for evidence, and identified Charlton as a suspect. We use some forensic evidence dealing with uh, telephone uh, calls and, and cell towers. By utilizing those, we were led to a suspect early on. Neighbors say Charlton has been staying at this home. He was arrested Monday and booked into King County Jail on suspicion of murder. The investigation is ongoing. Police found Lyons missing car late Monday night. They're also looking into whether Charlton could be tied to similar crimes. We'll look at other crimes and, and if any of them uh, uh, seem to be similar in appearance, then we'll continue down that road. John Blackstone, CBS News, Los Angeles. Investigators located Lyons' SUV, which had been reported stolen along with her disappearance. It was found in downtown Seattle. It is a safe haven for horses in the bluegrass in need, and now the Kentucky Equine Humane Center is in need of your help this weekend. Dan Stevens is out and about with details. Hi, Dan. Good afternoon, guys. We are here at the Kentucky Equine Humane Center, located in Jesmond County, where they do some amazing work for beautiful horses, beautiful horses many times who've just been given up by their owner, can't take care of them. We have Amanda Bryant with us. Amanda, what exactly is it you guys do here? We take in horses from all sorts of situations from within the state of Kentucky. They're all surrendered to us, and then we rehab them, retrain them, and adopt them out. Yeah, I know people can adopt them, but there's other ways they can help by like going to events like Stock the Barn. What is Stock the Barn? Absolutely. Stock the Barn is our largest annual fundraiser. We are having it this year at Manchester Music Hall. We will have a silent auction, and this year the most exciting part is we're having gaming. So instead of a live auction this year, we're going to try out having a casino night. Okay, when is the event? This Saturday, coming up April 16th at Manchester Music Hall, starting at 6:30. And how do folks get tickets? You can buy tickets online at www.stockthebarn.eventbrite.com. Sounds like lots of fun happening this weekend. Olivia is with us. Olivia, who do you have here? This is Smokey Knight. He's a 16-year-old thoroughbred gelding that's available for adoption here at the center. Tell me a little bit about Smokey and how similar the, the story is for Smokey and other horses who are housed here. Um, we get a lot of horses from a lot of different situations. KYEHC is an all breed rescue. We take in horses of all ages, breeds, and types. Um, and we have plenty of horses available for adoption to suit a variety of needs. 
Now, people may call and say, oh, that horse was beautiful. You guys will make sure that this is a family that can actually uh, benefit from a horse like Smoky Night, yes, right? It's not just a, hey, I like that horse, can I have it? No, we're very careful to make sure that we match the horse and their new owners so that the home will be a lasting one. Okay, learn more about the Kentucky Equine Humane Center here in Jesmond County. Be a part of the Stock the Barn that event that is happening this weekend uh, at Manchester Hall. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about with with Smoky Night. Back to you guys. Can you say back to you? Smoky likes the mic. <laughs> back to you all. What, what a great service. Beautiful, absolutely. Beautiful In, horse. Invaluable. James Franco exploring a troubled past in the Adderall Diaries and a new spy thriller ventures into science fiction. Suzanne Marquez has your eye on entertainment. Kevin Costner drew a crowd at the New York premiere of Criminal. The actor stars as a death row inmate who receives a memory transfer from murdered CIA agent Ryan Reynolds. The mission shows him to be much more than a criminal. You see the level of resourcefulness that, that he has in order to survive. The thriller opens in theaters Friday. A fairy tale takes a dark turn in the Huntsman Winter's War. The cast got a red carpet welcome at the U.S. premiere in Los Angeles. Chris Hemsworth is the rebellious huntsman. Charlize Theron and Emily Blunt are the evil queen sisters. I think about my daughter and I'd love her to see a film like this where women are empowered and in charge of their own destiny. The film is a prequel to the Snow White story. It arrives in theaters later this month. And James Franco digs into a dark and troubled childhood in the Adderall Diaries. Franco stars as a writer examining his violent relationship with his father. Each man sees himself as the victim. It's only when you have a uh, counter perspective that, you know, you start to um, see, oh, maybe this is the hero and this is the villain or vice versa. Ed Harris plays Franco's father. That's your eye on entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Los Angeles. The royal couple is continuing its royal tour of India today. Prince William and Kate had lunch with the Indian Prime Minister before traveling to a wildlife park that is home to rare one-horned rhinos, tigers, and other endangered animals. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge paid tribute to Queen Elizabeth at an early birthday party in New Delhi. William described his grandmother as, quote, remarkably energetic and referred to her as his boss. The royals then cut the cake with a sword to make the celebration. Uh, the queen is set to turn 90 next week. It's oh, gosh, after yesterday it was so rainy and nasty, I, I made the drive over to Moorhead today for a speaking engagement. It was just beautiful. Then you step out of the car and it changes a little bit, but still the sun shines out. Doesn't matter, Cannot right? Cannot complain no. about today. And Chris, the good news is going to get even better by this weekend. Yeah, right? we are going. We're going to keep the good-looking skies, and we're going to just add a lot of degrees on top of your car thermometers over the next several days as well. We're going straight from a pattern that was February-like into one that has a May feel later this weekend and early next week. We look outside now. Beautiful sky showing up across the entire area. Lexington now at 55 degrees, 61 the warm spot down into London, Jackson 58, 53 into northern Kentucky around the Covington to Cincinnati area. All four locations though with beautiful skies out there and really nothing to talk about in terms of any kind of precipitation. I'm not expecting a whole lot of chances of rain over the next several days. We'll break that pattern down when I come back in a few minutes. Right now let's get a check on that late afternoon commute with Officer Don. It looks like the crash off the Rhea Road has been cleared, so we are collision free on our map, which is great news. Entered out of loops with the circle. Slows right now between Purcells Road over to uh, Lee's Town Road in that corridor. Drive times for, for right now, uh, the ride to Mount Sterling looks pretty good. No major problems to Paris and Winchester. It's about 23 to 25 minutes. Now back to the studio. Officer Don, thank you. A fishy tail, a bad disguise, and a grandma wraps. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. It's a fish tail that's backed up by video evidence. A blue marlin nearly turned the tables on a fisherman off the coast of Australia. A sport fishing group posted this video of a close encounter on the company's Facebook page. Watch as that marlin nearly takes out a deckhand as it jumps toward the boat. The man was nearly impaled. Mm.
Well, in Brazil, it seems like two would be robbers could learn a thing or two about camouflage. They chose to cover themselves in foil to try and fool surveillance cameras during their attempted bank robbery. Too bad their shiny disguises were a dead giveaway. They ran away empty handed. One person has been arrested in this case. Hmm. And at 84 years young, Dr. Lucille Ijoy is using her love of music to say thank you to President Obama. Teaming up with a producer, Ijoy recorded her song, Listen to Grandmama <laughs> Say Thank You to Obama. She even starred in the music video. My heart begins to wander. Say thank you to Obama. Dr. <laughs> Ijoy says she wrote a letter to the president and he wrote her back. How much fun she's having. She's 84 I, and living big. Yep, she is spunky and I like it. Good for her. All right, stick with us. Here's what we're working on for you now at 5 o'clock.